Okay, I think we can slowly start. Um, I'll just put this slideshow on. Um, I hope that it's visible, that it's okay. Um, I have to tab around. Ah, oh, okay, nice. Uh, okay, so yeah, thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, Starknet, uh, which is a layer two, or a, also can be uh, can be called a rollup on top of Ethereum. Uh, so my first question would be, um, maybe for you uh, in in the audience, uh, how many of you have had experience with uh, any blockchain development? So you can type in in, in the chat maybe. Um, like, did you did you ever do any anything regarding uh, blockchain uh, development or? Okay. Rocco said just theoretical knowledge. Okay, Starknet, great. So yeah. Um, okay, so so we we will go. Um, I mean, this will not be. Uh, and this will not be like a, you know I will not show code and stuff like that, but it will be mostly uh, a little bit higher level, uh, higher level lecture. Um, but you know some experience uh, from from blockchain from block about blockchains in general is 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 uh, good to have uh, because then uh, concepts will be uh, will be um, more uh, more familiar. You you will. You will, you know, you will be, you will recognize some stuff uh, easier. But I will do my best, you know. I'll try to do my best to, to, you know, explain. Um, uh, but you know, feel free to feel free to ask any questions in the chat, and we will, we'll take, we can take a look uh, during the lecture or at the end, and try to address them. Okay, so um, back to the presentation. So just uh, briefly about me. Uh, my name is Ivan. I'm uh, from Split, uh, Croatia. Uh, born here and basically uh, living whole life here in, in Split. Uh, worked in various industries, companies, small and large. And for the last, let's say, two years, I'm full time in, in, in crypto, uh, in blockchain space, and uh, about the same same uh, about the same time. I mean, I started also uh, transitioning slowly from. Uh, development to engineering management. Uh, that's my current role at a company called Space Shard. Uh, you can see my Twitter handle here. Here, so uh, you know you can feel free to reach out to me and ask any questions. And uh, yeah, connect, connect on, on Twitter. I will. I have this handle again at the end of the, the presentation. So uh, don't worry about that for now. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Briefly about uh, Space Shard, uh, we are a, a blockchain R&D uh, company. Uh, our, our mission is uh, scaling Ethereum with validity rollup magic. So how do we do that? We are uh, in partnership with a company, Israeli company called Starkware. Um, Starkware is a, um, a unicorn, uh, unicorn company. They, uh, their last valuation was around uh, $8 billion. So you know, it's I, I think it's a pretty good evaluation for a company that has maybe I don't know 200 employees, and uh, how they achieved this because they, they had a they had a product called Stark X, uh, which which is a, a standalone zk rollup software as a service, and uh, basically they power uh, very cool uh, applications or DApps. Uh, called DYDX, uh, Immutable X, Sorare, and you can all, you can play you can play with those applications on Ethereum, and you'll see it's it's a much better uh, user experience than, for example, using just Ethereum itself. And, and some metrics uh, they have total number of transactions more than 400 million, almost four, 500 million, and cumulative trading uh, more than uh, they they just recently hit more than one trillion dollars in in cumulative trading. Uh, so yeah, pretty pretty impressive numbers. Uh, so uh, I mean, as already mentioned, StarkX it's all it all it all started as a as a software as a service, but uh, later on they figured out why not try to make this uh, technology more accessible. Uh, 
maybe more generalized and uh, that's how they came up with StarkNet, which is a permissionless decentralized validity rollup. I put a star on decentralized because it's not yet decentralized, but eventually it will be. So for, for now, uh, I mean, that there's only one uh, sequencer that's uh, producing blocks, but uh, soon that will, that will all change. Um, so yeah, the idea is that, you know, any developer can deploy any DAP, uh, translate it to, to, to move it from, for example, from Ethereum to StartNet and uh, achieve better scale and cheaper transactions than, he, than you would have on Ethereum itself. So uh, what we do concretely on StarkNet, uh, we, uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, libraries that are mostly uh, for, for developers, for example, DevNet, uh, which is like Ganache uh, on Ethereum, uh, but for StarkNet. We have a plugin for Hardhat also, for people who are familiar with, with Hardhat uh, will, will, you know, will know what to do. And we develop uh, StarknetJS, which is basically Ethers.js uh, for StarkNet. So those are the three very popular tools that help other developers in the ecosystem. And uh, we also, uh, among some other things, we help and advise projects that want to come and integrate, uh, that want to move over to StarkNet. So one of the uh, one of the projects that I mean, companies that we helped was a Chainlink, and uh, we are very proud of, proud on. on of that collaboration. Um, okay, so uh, a short intro. Uh, you probably you know know the story, and this article this uh, article was from 2021. Uh, I mean, it was very obvious at the time. Like Ethereum fees are uh, too damn high. Uh, you can see here uh, like uh, minting a simple NFT uh, cost between 60 and 200 uh, 250 dollars. So yeah. At, at, that state, you know, the network was pretty much uh, unusable, and you know, people didn't uh, didn't just stay, you know, uh, like uh, and doing nothing. They various various solutions were being developed um, uh, in the meantime, trying to address these issues. Um, but in general, like, what what can what can we do to scale a blockchain? We we have two options, like. We can make the blockchain itself have a higher transaction capacity, which is possible through, uh, for example, sharding. Um, there are various other possibilities that you can do, but they usually sacrifice some uh, some property of the of the blockchain. Uh, for example, you know, or decentralization or security, something is, has to be sacrificed in order to for a blockchain to scale. But uh, sharding is an interesting uh, concept that will eventually come to, to Ethereum. Uh, but until then, uh, Ethereum, the whole Ethereum community is uh, focusing currently on uh, layer twos or, or rollups. And the idea is to perform the bulk of the activity outside of the original chain. In our case, that would be Ethereum. And uh, yeah, that's that's what the the rest of the presentation will be will be about. We'll take a look at Starknet, uh, which is just one of uh, possible layer twos currently um, that's being being developed. Um, so yeah, like uh, what are layer twos or, or rollups? Um, the idea is to process transactions off the main chain. In our case, Ethereum. Then we batch those transactions, compress them. Um, We'll see this in, in a little more detail later. And then we deliver those transactions back to the main chain, in our case, Ethereum. So uh, you could take hundreds of transactions, possibly even thousands, uh, on L2, compress them into just one transaction and uh, post it on, on, on L1 or, or Ethereum. So in our case, like you, you see here, the, the famous blockchain trilemma, uh, you can, uh, it says that you cannot have um, uh, all three at the same, all three uh, properties at the, at the same time, like scalability, decentralization, and security. Um, Ethereum has uh, security and decentralization, but scalability is not uh, is not easily achieved. Uh, so that's why uh, L2s, as you see here, uh, L1 Ethereum provides yeah security data 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 availability, which is very important for uh, rollups. But L2s provide scaling. Okay, so now it's a time for a little story. Uh, 
And I, I will say uh, in advance that this story doesn't have much to do with with uh, blockchains, but we will we will see how it ties ties together with the, with the blockchain space. But uh, the idea is that we are um, we want to go to space. We want to uh, explore space. And uh, how do we do that? So we have some questions that we need to we need to answer uh, while solving all these space exploration problems. For example, how to save fuel. What's the best launch window? What's the best trajectory, etc. And uh, we have a bunch of engineers, and they create some algorithm to solve these problems for in some programming language, for example, in Rust. It could be any other, but we we chose Rust. Uh, so yeah, that's that's all fine and well. But the there is one problem that execution uh, of our algorithm it needs a supercomputer. To run, uh, so we cannot do it ourselves. Our our country doesn't have such a such a supercomputer that can run these uh, these algorithms efficiently. Uh, and um, apparently, our rival country they have a, such a supercomputer that we could potentially use or or borrow. So uh, currently, the question is, uh, what, what can we do? Can we tr can we trust this rival country? We have to. Send our uh, our algorithm. The uh, uh, the rival country they execute the algorithm and they they give us back some result. And how can we know if this supercomputer didn't malfunction or they didn't change some things? That, that there's no no such some sabotage or something like that. Like how can we be sure? Um, we just can't. So the idea is that. Currently, with 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 the you know classic uh, programming primitives, it, it, this is not really possible. Um, so, the idea is, so the company Starkware they um, they invented one special language. We'll not name it yet. We'll come to that later. But basically, to to form a trustless corporation. What we did, uh, what we can do is rewrite our, our algorithm into this special language. We send it to the rival country. They can execute the uh, the program, the algorithm, and they can give us back the result plus the proof. So this this proof is very interesting, and we will expand expand on this proof. Um, but the idea is, if the execu execution of the program is intentionally or unintentionally modified, the proof will be invalid. So uh, this gives us the opportunity that our weak computer, regular computer, is able to keep a supercomputer honest. Uh, even a rival, rival country can run this supercomputer, but our small computer can verify this proof and see if if there was any any uh, any change in the execution of our of our algorithm or or modification. Okay, so. Um, so now we come to the to the programming programming language. You see this little picture. It's called Cairo. Uh, why why do we need Cairo? Uh, it creates provable programs. Uh, a cryptographic proof is generated alongside the result. Uh, we have a, another computer that can uh, verify this proof and can detect cheating. And this is very important without re-execution. You have to remember that for our execution, for our space exploration case, we needed a supercomputer. And we don't have that supercomputer at home. We just have regular computers. But with Cairo, our regular computer can uh, verify that the execution of the supercomputer uh, was, was, you know, was honest. And uh, this is super powerful. We, we, will, we will see in blockchain how this helps scaling. Um, yeah, so yeah, I was ahead of myself a little bit. So a regular computer can uh, keep a supercomputer honest. And how does this work? How does Cairo work? Uh, it's, uh, it's based on relatively complex math. Uh, I say relatively because, you know, some people know this math uh, are, are better at math. Some are, are maybe, you know, not so familiar. So. Uh, it, it it depends on uh, on your on your you know profession, but anyway it, it's it's based on polynomial equations which has to have to satisfy certain uh, constraints. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know theory behind this and a lot of research, 
that has been going on from, I think, back from the 80s, research on, on, on this whole uh, math and cryptography that, that, that is applied in, in uh, Cairo programming language and zero knowledge proofs. Uh, so a little bit about evolution of Cairo. Uh, it was released in 2020 by Starkware. Uh, it's the, the first provable programming language. And it's, uh, it can be used outside of blockchain. It's, it's a general purpose programming language. Um, but the, the thing is with, with Cairo Zero, it was low level. It was similar to assembly, uh, assembly programming language. It has a little bit steep learning curve. Um, there are some issues like cannot generate proof for failed transactions, which is a, a in the blockchain space, it's a potential for denial of service attacks. Uh, so how how was this sold? It was sold with uh, a, uh, with Cairo initially called Cairo One. Now, now it will just be called Cairo, which is a higher level language inspired by Rust. So uh, Cairo One will will make this is making the syntax easier for developers and also solving the the previously mentioned problem of uh, of denial of service. And uh, the, the good thing is that uh, well, Cairo One is already on Starknet. You can you know, write smart contracts with it and uh, generally play, play around. OK, so uh, this story was you know, basically uh, not that related to blockchain. Uh, but now we'll, we'll see uh, why Starknet and how Cairo, how, how this, this whole story uh, can help scale ethereum so the, the all the things that i mentioned in the in the intro so uh briefly about the l1 scaling problem um who has you know who knows anything regarding ethereum uh, knows that basically you can have one block producer um even let's say that block producer says the new state is is 42 and then you have a bunch of uh validators or nodes that basically have to uh, repeat all this, uh, all of the, all the computation that was done in the block producer, all the val validators, the whole Ethereum network has to uh, repeat this uh, this computation. So uh, that that's why I mean that's why you have complete security, but scaling is problematic. So so that's the, that's the L1 scaling problem, and. Uh, what what's what is uh the story of starknet like how do we solve this uh with the help of starknet uh we have this if you see that little block is a little bit bigger so the computation is uh approximately the same but and plus you have a little bit uh additional additionally to the execution you get a proof so the new state is 42 and here is also the proof but wh what happens now when we send this to starknet you can see the little blocks. There's a lot less computation going on on Ethereum. So all the all the validators, all the nodes on Ethereum have to have to do uh, a lot less computation than before. So that's the that's the that's the good thing. So if you remember now the story with the supercomputer and space exploration, that that same story we can apply blockchains, and that's why this is so cool. Like um, uh, we can basically you know do much more much more transactions on l2 and just post post one uh, one uh, proof and uh and actually anyone on ethereum is able to uh much quickly as you can see in the next slide much quickly uh, verify the proof so if we see uh the sequencer is the is the uh, block producer on starknet uh you see this n um for example computation on on, on starknet uh, let's say it can grow uh, linearly, so n, and but the, the 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 nice thing is that you know execution grow ex execution sorry execution grows like a uh, factor of n, but uh, verification on Ethereum is logarithm of of n. So the more execute uh, the more computation on layer two, um, the actual verification doesn't grow that much. So you can see this graph. Like uh, you can have thousands and thousands of transactions of on layer two, but it won't take much much more uh, computational power on Ethereum to verify and validate uh, verify basically all of these 
transactions on Ethereum. So that's a very, very cool property uh, of Starks and, and StarkNet. And uh, we can basically say that uh, validity proofs, so the, the, the technology that StarkNet is based on, is to computation what what in uh, classical pro uh, you know it uh, zipping would be to file size so basically you compress you compress um, uh, validity proof uh, you know you compress the uh, proof to uh, uh, computation <laughs> sorry um okay so this is this is uh this was the theory about starknet and we can now go to uh, see what are some other cool features that that Starknet uh, gives you as as a uh, potential developer or or user. So, uh, yeah, Starknet already uh, briefly mentioned is based on validity proofs. They are an implement implementation of zero knowledge proofs. That's a general term. Um, they they guarantees zk proofs guarantee computational integrity. What does that mean? Uh, that you are doing the right thing like even when no one is looking so these are mathematically uh this is mathematically like uh it's, it's just it just works like there's a whole as i said math and cryptography like that enables this uh, this statement uh working on the, on the blockchain space uh so uh, you maybe heard about zk zero knowledge it it, it it's like the concept is also applicable to privacy, but in this state of the network, it's not really about privacy, it's more about scaling. Uh, privacy can be solved with this, but it's, it's not yet the, the focus of, of Starknet. Um, ZK rollup, you'll see this term thrown around, but uh, it's a misnomer in, in case of Starknet. Starknet is a uh, validity rollup. Um, and there are there are two types of uh, zero knowledge proofs: Starks and Snarks. Starks Starknet uses uh, Starks, but uh, you know later on, uh, if if you if you get interested in any of these uh, topic, uh, you know various topics, you can you can you can use this presentation as a starting point, maybe to to research a bit more, or you know you can always ask me uh, questions, and we, we can come back to to uh, to these various uh, concepts. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe you can ask yourself, like, why did uh, Starknet or Starkware, why did they choose to build a new language uh, and the whole VM, like Cairo runs on a Cairo VM, and not the EVM, like the EVM is Ethereum virtual machine. Um, because, you know, uh, you know, developers with the new language, new concepts, they need to learn it like it's 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 an overhead so why why didn't they cho choose to go this path like some other for example you maybe heard about various zk evms zk evms like polygon is building one and and zk uh, zk sync for example they they go, they went through the zk evm uh, path but the thing is you cannot have it's a scale like you cannot have both good compatibility and performance so Starkware chose performance over compatibility, and that's the that's the bet they are they are uh, having for the future. Like the performance will be much more important than the compatibility with uh, cur current Ethereum, uh, how it works. Okay, so uh, briefly about uh, Starknet's architecture, we have a sequencer which is uh, which is responsible for producing blocks. Uh, which is, as I mentioned already, not yet decentralized. Uh, we have a component called Prover, which is uh, generating the proof. On Ethereum, we have a uh, verifier, uh, which is a, a smart contract that can verify uh, verify the, the proofs that are being sent from, from Starknet. And there is a Starknet core contract that uh, also has uh, some other functionalities, for example, messaging and, and stuff like that. You, you, it, it enables basically those other functionalities. And of course, we have some full nodes uh, that are uh, syncing uh, between the um, L1 and L2, and you can query those full nodes and get, get all, the, all the relevant data that your DAP, DAP needs. So uh, we went through, I think, all of these um, um, terms already. So I can maybe skip this, this slide. 
and come to the next cool, uh, very cool feature, uh, which is on Ethereum ERC4337, also known as uh, account abstraction, uh, which is a very cool property that, uh, that that's baked in in Starknet, uh, in, in Starknet, but unfortunately it's not on Ethereum. So this ERC4337 is, the idea is to bring account, account abstraction to Ethereum, but it's not on the protocol level itself. So, uh, so the idea, the idea is to make smart contract wallets first class citizens. So, um, you know, on Ethereum, probably, you know, that you have those, uh, externally owned accounts, uh, you have your, your address is basically your, your, your account, but on Starknet, your, your, your account is a smart contract. And th this gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot, a lot more can be done. Uh, when your account is a pure smart contract, and we'll see uh, some of the benefits. Uh, one of them is uh, customized signature verification, bundling of transactions like multi-call, we'll, we'll get back to this, paying fees with uh, non-native tokens, so you don't have to pay fees with Ethereum, you can pay fees with any basically RC20 token, uh, delegation of payment to some paymasters, etc. So uh, this is these are just some some of the benefits. One of the cooler benefits also that account abstraction gives you for wallets basically is that you can turn your smartphone, which if your smartphone is uh, has some kind of secure enclave, uh, for example, in Apple or, or in um, Samsung has Knox and Google has Titan chip, uh, you can basically turn your mobile phone into a uh, hardware wallet. So theoretically, you wouldn't need to have a separate uh, ledger uh, device. Um, to secure your transactions, so that that that's also this is also one of the cool uh, yeah properties that account abstraction uh, uh, give, gives you as as a developer. Uh, yeah, laptops and PCs. Uh, I mentioned multi-call, uh, so this is bundling of uh, multiple uh, user operations into a single transaction. So yeah, this is the the bundling, and what it what it achieves is that now, uh, for example, in the what, what could happen in Ethereum, your, uh, you know, multiple steps can be breaking down into various blocks or you can have flashbots between them and stuff like that. But with multi-calls, your transactions are bundled and they cannot be broken, broken up uh, between uh, various blocks um, or various orders. So yeah, that, that's one, one cool thing. Uh, and to summarize, yeah, signature verification, transaction execution defined as a smart contract. Uh, account abstraction is a first class citizen of Starknet. Bundling of user operations, smartphones and laptops can become hardware wallets. Uh, one other cool thing is session keys. So, account, account abstraction gives you the possibility, for example, uh, if you play a game on blockchain, uh, you can program with account, with account abstraction that. Uh, with every step, uh, you know, when you're playing a game, you, currently, you know, you, you would need to sign every every transaction, every uh, move that you make in the game, which has some value, you need to sign a transaction. But with session keys, you can basically say to your wallet, I don't care, I won't sign any transaction that is uh, cheaper than $1, for example. And then your wallet will not ping you all the time. Uh, it will automatically sign all transactions cheaper than, for example, some some threshold that you that you set. So this is also something something interesting. Uh, okay, so um, you maybe heard about optimistic rollups, uh, which are uh, let's say competition to also to to use um, zero knowledge uh, rollups. The problem with with them is that they have a one week finality uh, on on Ethereum, uh, and the you know, Starknet and zero knowledge uh, rollups, they have a much lower time to finality. It's around 10 hours. Um, theoretically, it could be lower, but you know, you have to be sure that there is no reorganization of blocks on Ethereum. Uh, so yeah, time to finality, some some 10 hours is, is uh, probably a sweet spot uh, for this. So, but way better than, than optimistic rollups with one big finality. Um, it would be fair to mention some problems with Starknet, like uh, it's it's heavily in development still. So uh, 
currently on mainnet, uh, it's a, a low TPS of maybe two or three transactions per second. But I put an asterisk on this because this will change very, very soon. I'm talking about, you know, maybe one, two, three weeks because on testnet, there is a startnet 0.12 version that achieves a much higher uh, TPS, uh, 40 plus. So there will be a big improvement with this release and all future releases will uh, will bump this number up. So already developers who are using Startnet are seeing a dramatic, this dramatic increase uh, with their dApps. And yeah, like uh, that's why this Asterix is, is here and you know, it's, it's coming pretty soon and we are all very, very excited. Um, the TVL is a bit low still, but it's rising uh, around $70 million. But in time, uh, also by the end of the year, I expect this will rise a lot higher. Uh, already maybe mentioned that not all components are fully open source, but they will be. There's a commitment from Starkware to, to do this. Um, sequence are not yet decentralized, uh, also coming soon. Uh, some stuff are rough around the ages. It's it, it, it's it's still you know uh, a lot of things are in heavy development. You have to learn a new language, but all of this uh, can be a, a great opportunity. For example, you know if you decide to come and be a developer on Startnet or bring your business over, if you know if and when Startnet becomes you know um, the best uh, layer two among them. You were the early adopter, and you will probably have a bigger, much bigger advantage than any other project that, that will come later on when the network sta one, uh, stabilizes. You know, um, you will be in a much, much bigger advantage than than any of them. Okay, so uh, now uh, we can take a look at the, the future. What's what's coming? Um, so uh, yeah, there's a whole roadmap regarding decentralization. So uh, yeah, sequencer currently decentralized, but it's being rewritten to Rust and open sourced. Some some component like Blockifier is open sourced. Uh, full nodes will uh, don't have ha don't have yet have the capacity of uh, peer to peer communication, but that this will also change uh, very soon. And prover uh, also uh, needs to be open sourced. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, there, there's this whole uh, roadmap, and it it it, it will all come in, in due time. Um, there is a Starkin Foundation uh, that has been established uh, uh, by end of 2020. Um, so there are seven uh, members of the board. The goal is to make Starknet a public good. Uh, there is the the Stark token, uh, of course, and um, the foundation will have around 50% of the initial supply. And they will be responsible of, uh, you know, um, delegating these tokens and giving them, giving them to various projects they want to build. So if you have some idea, you know, that you want to build, you can probably, you know, apply for the, to the foundation to get to get a grant or funding um, in order to kickstart your your project. Um, yeah, off chain voting with snapshot. So okay, so. Uh, one of the reasons that Startnet was slow uh, is that most of the tech was written in uh, Python. Um, but currently, basically, every part of the infrastructure is uh, being rewritten or is, or is already rewritten to Rust, which by itself gave a lot of uh, speed improvement. Um, for example, the Cairo VM got uh, rewritten to Rust. It, get, it got 20 times faster uh, than the Python version and a lot less memory used. So yeah, that's that's one of the, the benefits uh, just with the, basically just with the rewrite. And now, you know, later on, you can do various other optimizations. Um, one more cool thing that's coming, uh, even I think in the, could even come in the next version of Startnet is Volition. So Basically, uh, this will allow apps, apps to uh, choose where they want to store data. So, we'll, uh, and the idea is to, uh, so for example, currently 90 something percent of the cost of uh, when you do a transaction on Stacknet, for example, if you pay $1 for transaction, 90 cents goes just for storage on Ethereum. And dApps, in, uh, when Volition hits Stacknet, 
DApps can choose like, do they want to store uh, all transactions on Ethereum, or they will, you know, store them on on Starkent, for example, or some other uh, other uh, data availability provider, which will, you know, potentially really uh, decrease like uh, um, the cost of of transactions. Uh, there is also a EIP four eight four four proto dank sharding that will lower this cost on Ethereum itself. And once this this is uh, achieved on Ethereum, it, it will also be uh, done on on Starknet as well. So, in theory, uh, you will have even lower cost of, of transactions uh, with with EIP four eight four four. Another cool thing cool thing that's coming is uh, storage proofs. So the idea is that you can create a small uh, verifiable proof that a certain data exists on the blockchain at a particular time. So uh, you don't need to trust third parties for this uh, proof. And this will allow a layer two cross communication uh, in a trustless way. So this will allow a lot of use cases that are not currently uh, even possible to do. Uh, but very soon, um, you know, um, it will, you know, simplify, for example, cross chain voting or uh, even can be uh, alternative to, to some par portions of bridges or oracles. So keep an eye on storage proofs. It's, it's not yet there, but it's pretty soon it's, it's going to be, I think, a pretty big, uh, pretty big thing to, to keep an eye on. And one other thing uh, that's being heavily developed currently is a fractal scaling. So what does that mean? So, okay, we have layer one Ethereum, layer two is Starknet. But why not have an additional layer? So on top of Starknet. So if if we can bundle proofs, you know, if we can bundle transactions and send them to Ethereum, couldn't we do the same thing with uh, one layer above that? Uh, we we can do that, and people are already building uh, solutions to for this. And it's called fractal scaling because you can basically build multiple layer trees. So you can build your custom blockchain. Uh, and customize it in various ways. For example, one can have a higher TPS or other can have cheaper transactions. Uh, this could be very useful for gaming, for example. And uh, a third layer three can have uh, better privacy, uh, anonymous transactions maybe. And all of these layer trees can run on top of Starknet. And this is, this is you know, also, you know, something that's, 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 that's really cool. That's also, uh, coming real soon. Uh, why am I telling, uh, saying soon? Because uh, if I introduce the project called Madara, uh, it's, it's a open source, uh, fast, blazingly fast uh, Starknet sequencer. It's built on uh, in Rust on top of Substrate. And it will basically uh, allow you to, to spin up your own uh, L3s on or app chains. It has already achieved, you know, in, in testing uh, 200 TPS. And yeah, as I said, like any user project could use it to run their own Starknet app chain or, or layer three. Yeah, and uh, proof of execution is and is verified on top of Starknet. So uh, Madara is open source and uh, you can contribute to it uh, without any problems and you can even get paid to, to contribute. So uh, you can reach out to me later on. I can explain uh, maybe uh, a little bit more about this. And one last project that I want to um, that I want to introduce is uh, Kakarot. So I already explained that uh, you know there are zk VMs, so you can you know build uh, you can port your already existing Ethereum DApp on a zk VM. So uh, and not maybe completely, but you know you you have a lot of tools already being being built on Ethereum that you can just port on a on a zk EVM uh, rollup. And Kakarot plan Kakarot plans to uh, is its plan is to be a uh, zk EVM but built on top of Cairo. So you could theoretically have you know your Ethereum DAP uh, built on top of Kakarot. But it will all, all run in the in the Cairo VM, uh, yeah. So executing Solidity code in a completely uh, Stark provable way. Uh, it it now it it became a company by itself, and uh, not sure now is it open. I think it's still open for contributions, 
but I have to double check. Sorry, I, I forgot about this little this um, part of the slide. But anyway, uh, if, if you're interested also more about Kakarot, you can reach out and, and um, I'll give you all, all the info uh, regarding that. Okay, so yeah, just to summarize, yeah, the, there is an ongoing effort to open source the tech stack. Uh, research is being done on the decentralization of the protocol. Foundation is it has Starknet Foundation has been established uh, to advance Starknet as a public good. Uh, tech stack is being re tech stack is being rewritten in Rust. Uh, work on speed and uh, yeah, uh, com computation. Um, should I say uh, computation being cheaper, transactions becoming cheaper, uh, fractal scaling, so yeah, specialized layer threes, layer fours, etc. And all of this is coming uh, very, very soon on Starknet. So yeah, the future is um, um, as one of the co-founders of Stark of Starkware, Eli said, uh, Starknet is is future proof and here to stay. So uh, thank you for uh, thank you for uh, coming to this talk. Uh, my Twitter handle again is the in the in the bottom right corner. Uh, you can also take a look at uh, Space Shard. Uh, we have we write blogs, development blogs. Um, try to help people also who want to you know uh, come and learn Starknet and uh, contribute. Uh, we try to you know release relatively frequently new blogs that that help that aim to help uh, users and and developers. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I think we can uh, come to the to the questions. Um, so I'll see here in the chat. Yeah, testnet now rocks. Thank you too. Thanks, thanks, Rocco. Uh, I hope that I was. Um, I hope that I was uh, clear. I mean, English is not my native language, so you know sometimes I maybe can get stuck. Uh, trying to find some words in my head but i hope you 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 got a, a sense of of it i can even maybe share this presentation um to the public um can i do that i think i can just i'll stop this uh, share anyone with the link yeah sure copy link and yeah post it here okay q and a uh, proof is like a recap of what the program executed um, um well um i think it could be uh said like this uh, the idea of the proof is that um, basically uh, you have some kind of, you know, um, uh, let's say uh, some it's, it's it's some format that that uh, that then the, the smart contract on the on the on the Ethereum side can you know can read through and uh, try to randomly find uh, find some ways like did, did the prover cheat like it's it's like uh, i personally am not <laughs> good at explaining it i read it a couple of times but it's uh, you know uh, it's a bit uh, mathy uh, let's say uh, like how this verification of the proof works and there's a lot of articles on this but yeah, I, I think I think yeah, like proof it could be it could be said that it's like a recap, and then on Ethereum you could like go through that proof. You could go through various parts of the proof and try to challenge it, let's say in some way. You can you can try to find a fault in the proof and see uh, verify did the prover or or layer two starknet did it cheat or change change something in the in the actual. Um, in the actual execution on, on L2. Um, yeah, so I don't know, any, any maybe other questions? Uh, if not, 
then yeah, reach out to me on, on Twitter. Uh, you have the presentation here. Thank you once again for coming. And uh, yeah, this was the first time for me to, to have some kind of uh, presentation like this. So yeah, uh, thank you once again and uh, hope to see you soon on StarkNet. Bye-bye.